Power TV, lifestyle and leadership integrated. Building a stronger nation, one woman at a time. I've often wondered what would happen, how my self-confidence, self-esteem, and capacity for achieving wonderful things would develop and grow if I saw myself as others do. I'm here on your screen hosting this show, and you know, I did this. It wasn't luck. It wasn't just handed to me. I worked hard to be here, and yet sometimes, still, I feel like I don't belong. I think we all feel that way sometimes. I'm Kate Bergen, this is Power TV. Today we are inspired by Marilyn Wilson, a Canadian author who got goosebumps when her passion found her at 49 years of age. I only work with people where I feel that we're coming together to benefit each other, that we're raising each other. Move Me, Jody Jackson, performance coach, connect mind, body and spirit, getting past the hiccups, a lesson for the course and for life. Fuel me. Now here's the thing about living foods is that they have electromagnetic energy in them. They are alive. Sherry Strong, food philosopher and chef, using nutrition for a cleaner, younger looking and healthier skin. And finally, our note to self. And we should hold tightly, cherish our gifts. Steely Springham, inspirational conversationalist and coach, brings it all home, moving from inspiration into action. This is what happens when Canadian women who are making an impact in sport, business, the arts and community leadership come together. Today we're celebrating a woman who didn't find her path until she was 49 years old. A woman who collects pieces of gold from the hundreds of interviews that she's done with high profile people in the fashion industry, an industry that she was at first a bit intimidated about, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. This is a woman who hold, held her finger over the delete button of her now published novel, Life Outside the Box, Extraordinary Journeys of 10 Unique Individuals. It's available on Amazon.com in Canada and the United States, as well at Chapters Indigo and Barnes and & Noble. Marilyn Wilson is a freelance writer, a regular columnist with Metro Living Zine in Vancouver, former editor and co-owner of Vancouver Fashion Zine, and she's also a former staffer at Rain Magazine in New York City. Marilyn, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun today. And I wanna start off on the right path. Okay. Is there such a thing no. as the right path? No. Um, I think the biggest thing is I grew up in a very strict, very religious environment, and there was only one way to think, and one way, and women were not, only had a few paths at that time and stuff, and I think after 150 interviews, it was so freeing to see all these people living passions that were outside the box, passions I'd never heard about, and, and it gave me permission to look differently at my life. It's just so exciting to know we're all unique and we're all different, and that's what makes our journey exciting. I always look for the unique person, always. The passion started in you very young, but it didn't fulfill, being a writer, and it didn't fulfill itself really or come to fruition until you were 49 years old? What happened? I, I don't know. I was sitting one day at the computer, um, my kids didn't need me as much anymore, and I saw an ad from a, a New York magazine looking for contributions. And I remember thinking, I got A's in English, how hard can this be? You didn't have a writing degree? That didn't no, stop you? No. I had a BA, but no, I just always have been good at writing, and I just thought, how hard can it be? I sent them off, they were, uh, of the three, two were accepted. And the most interesting part was when I went out to do the interview to the first designer, I had goosebumps. I, I, it hit me between the eyes. I'd always been interested in people. I'd always had a passion. I'd worked on my master's in counseling and realized it wasn't right. All of a sudden, like it, 
it all, you know, the angel thing, it all came together for me. Interviewing people gave me that, that ability to connect with them in a way I wanted. But to get those interviews, I had to write and do articles. Mm -hmm. And I really was clueless at how much it took and how much learning and how much I would not be accepted as a 49-year-old woman mm -hmm. walking into, not, not be accepted. Sure enough, I have no background. Most people start with internships right out of university right. and work their way up. And here I am at 49. I've been home for 15 years with my kids. And I'm going to walk in and, and be hired as a writer. In a fashion. Uh, well, fashion. fashion is really great because there's, there's all kinds of publications out there. You don't get paid, but they're dying for material. So the internet has created great opportunities out there for people to write that want to write. And entertainment, um, beauty, fashion, um, wellness are all huge uh, topics in digital publications. So if you're interested in writing, and you're willing to write in one of those fields. Um, I was fortunate my daughter had done a little freelance modeling, and so I knew a couple designers, and I, I love interviewing people. So it's always been about the artist for me and the person behind. Uh, it's never been about fashion, but honestly, I hadn't a clue. I grew up poor. I shopped at Zeller's and Kmart and Value Village. I knew nothing yeah. about fashion, but I got to interview this artist. Uh, and there's the first one was a, a, a First Nation Métis woman who has been a producer and a fashion designer. Her mother founded the Blanche McDonald School mm -hmm. and two hours of history, not only her story, but her history and her culture. I had goosebumps from top to bottom yeah, the whole I, time. The passion is oozing out of you. Every I, I can feel it. Every time I go it. back to that moment, I have goosebumps now. It was such a, an eye opener that, that my passion would come to me at 49. Yeah. I thought about writing, but it just never came together. And and at 49, my passion could still find me. So having the insight that you've been able to get into these people's lives, that they open the door and they let you in, yeah. and they trust you and they share yes. with you, is there one, we talked about nuggets of gold. Can you name one oh, or two? Oh, I can name tons. Um, Ruthie Davis, who's in my book, mm -hmm. talks about teamwork. Like she's just a brilliant entrepreneur and even she says, nobody succeeds without a team. And I started to think about it and I thought I only got published because of my support system. Uh, mm -hmm. William Orlowski, I, I recite this every single day and I know I mentioned it to you. Um, top Canadian icon in tap kind of forgotten right now, huge struggle with dystonia and a movement disorder. And I said, what's your definition of success? He says, there is none. Just do and be brave. All right, well, we're so, going to be back in just a minute with more from Marilyn Wilson looking at the beauty in imperfection. You're watching Power TV. Welcome to Move Me, I'm Jody Jackson, and today I play golf with a couple of friends. Uh, Liz Gamble over here is a beginner and recreational golfer, and Karen Kloski is a competitive golfer. Good times out in the golf course, and I just kind of wanted to ask you ladies, what brought you to the sport? Uh, I started initially with my husband and a group of friends that were just going out in the evenings. He was always out on the golf course, so yeah. it's either you stay home alone or you get out there and start playing. And yeah. I golf with lots of other people now too. It sort of started out just with him and a couple friends, and then as you become more comfortable, the circle grew a bit more. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And you golf out of? March Meadows. March Meadows. In Lake College. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful golf course, nine holes. And yourself, Liz, what brought you to the game? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a caddy at heart. <laughs> No, I only came out last year just to support my husband and my cousin who are golfers and love it. And so I just pushed around the bag and criticized. <laughs> and uh, really only started the last couple of weeks. Wow. Picking up sticks, so. But you're a natural athlete. You can see that when you go after the ball. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, lots of ball hitting experience. <laughs> oh yeah, Whoa, that's a left foot nice finish one. right there. Get in the freaking hole. Oh my God. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. There it is! <laughs> yes! The fact that, you know, for a lot of women who've been competitive in other sports, yeah. um, taking up golf can be a little bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so this has been interesting kind of looking at how to get, you know, women like myself into a sport like this. Yeah. You know, as we progress from beginnerhood and through the whole pathway, there will be hiccups, there will be times where the wheels fall off and you'll want to quit. <laughs> and uh, as a golf professional, the teaching professional with the LPGA, I really encourage that people come out and take a few lessons because 
a happy golfer is a long-lasting golfer. <laughs> and I know we gave you a little tip out there today just to get onto the left foot, just like you're throwing a golf ball or any kind of ball. And you hit a great couple of shots after you, we did one little tip out there. Yeah, so, it's true. Yeah, it's so true. lessons are important uh, and social and fun and working on things that are the important things to improve versus getting some lessons from maybe some stranger on the driving range or sometimes husbands or other people can influence <laughs> our lessons and, and uh, so professional help is what I'm suggesting. Okay. I think if you want to beat your husband you take le lessons from someone else. There you go. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well thank you very much ladies Thanks, for coming out and I really appreciate your wisdom and I really hope that we have more golfers come in out here. Uh, women there's lots of opportunities just check in your local golf courses for some of these fun leagues that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. This is Move Me motion is lotion. Let's keep walking. How many steps did we take? 14,000. 14,000, 18 holes. Let's get out there. We're back on the Power TV set with Marilyn Wilson. We left off exploring or the tease of exploring the power in imperfection. We can often think of imperfections that we see in ourselves as things that can hold us back, but you see power. They held me back for a long time. Um, I grew up in a very religious environment. I did not fit in. It was very important to my parents that I did. So we all did our best. But the message that I grew up with was who I was as a person hurt my parents' work. Um, and and I that had, was your imperfection, is that you didn't live up to well, their expectations? And, and I had an ADD mind. It raced. I was too curious about people. I asked the wrong questions. Mm. I, I couldn't, like, the girly, girly thing never worked for me. And I was so intense. I felt things so deeply. And so I studied psychology at first and then decided that wasn't right. Um, is it your I interviews that, that I, allowed you to accept your imperfections? Yeah, somewhere in the middle of all those interviews, I began to realize my uniqueness was okay. What is your uniqueness? Oh, I'm so curious. My mind races a, a hundred ways. And I, you have the same gift. When you're interviewing... And I'm you so glad that you call it a gift because I, I could look at it and quite often stop myself yeah. from looking at it as a detriment. But, but I didn't realize in the middle of interviewing, they said, you're really good at this. And I thought, okay, why am I good at this? Mm -hmm. I'm good because I can listen. My mind can still race. And I am so absolutely interested in what they tell me. That curiosity, instead of being a negative, is a positive. Mm -hmm. So there's still times I go to the girly, girly baby showers or some really rich event. Everybody knows how to act. I can't do that. I'm a bull in a china shop. I say mm -hmm. what's on my mind. I'm very real. And you still so, get invited to these things? Well, because I'm media, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so, so, but knowing that their gifts makes it easier to accept that you're not always the in person, that not everybody's going to like you. Mm -hmm. What a, I wouldn't give up my gifts because then I wouldn't be good at my passion. Mm -hmm. And that didn't come till about halfway through my interviewing. It was one of those backwards things somebody talked about. And we talked about wabasabi, the beauty and imperfection. Mm -hmm. And I thought, OK, I'll love my imperfections because they're beautiful. The Japanese use the analogy yeah. of a broken vase, and you put it back together with gold. Gold. So, But I moved beyond that after a while to the fact that I realized, no, there, th I finally planted those seeds in the right place. And when I'm mm -hmm. in it, I've got goosebumps sharing this. Mm -hmm. I know this I is important them. to somebody. Yeah. Um, it is so important to accept your uniqueness. And if it's causing you trouble right now, if you're getting the, oh, Marilyn, if you could only... And if you change that, you'll in be your loved. Own head or from external sources. Well, it's sources. it's a outside. You know, you'll be loved if if you yeah. fit and conform. That's not true. You'll be unhappy if you fit and conform. Yeah. So it becomes important to find where you're supposed to be, where your gifts are useful, and once they're useful, it's so much easier to see the beauty in them. You would not give them up because you wouldn't follow your passion if you weren't if you didn't have these talents. I'm gonna back up just a little bit, and you said that you wouldn't be where you were today, and you wouldn't have been able to overcome some of the challenges, the challenges that everybody face in different ways on the path that they're finding for themselves without a team and without that network of support. And, and there's one word that sums it up for you. U Ujama, um, this was put forward as the name of a charity for me. It is one of the days of Kwanzaa and talks about cooperative economics. So how it fit in the charity was about bringing the village together to define what was important and working as a group to raise each other up. And I'm going to, to do a little name dropping here. That's one of the reasons I'm drawn to powerhouses because I feel the women all coming together, mm -hmm. but I never feel about she's trying to get ahead or she's trying to get ahead. I feel like we're coming together as a group. I love that. And so 
my friends now are all people I count on 100%. My business relationships are formed where I find they're interactive. They get something from me, I get something back. We are, I only work with people where I feel that we're coming together to benefit each other, that we're raising each other. Um, do you seek that out or do you find I, that oh, it, I, it comes to you? I started by seeking it out, but a lot of it is just recognizing the interactions around you. Um, sometimes you, you get an opportunity and I come home and, and I have to think about it a little bit if my heart's not not talking. But like this interview, my heart said yes. Mm -hmm. But part of that- We're so came, glad you did. It well, did. but part of that came because I've been around a couple powerhouse people. I've been to one of their speaker series. I could get the feel of event and I knew this was in line with where I am going, which is I'm here to raise you up and I know mm -hmm. you're here to raise me up. This is a Nujama relationship. I just got the one minute yes. over the shoulder. I wanna to touch on your need being fulfilled for connectedness. And it does go to the team that you have behind you, yeah. and it's what you get out of your interviews. I, your interviews could be about fashion, they could be about sports. You find are, that same they connection. Are, they are never about anything but the person. I don't care what the person's doing. I've interviewed um, sandcastle builders. I've interviewed all kinds of people. It is about that person. What were you like? How did? What was your journey? How did you get to this point? And what does this point mean to you? Mm -hmm. What does your passion mean to you? If you get that, then you understand what they're doing. Okay. It's the story behind that defines it. We're gonna be right back with more from Marilyn Wilson looking at visualizing who you want to show up as. Young skin, clean skin, it's clear without lotion. Isn't that what we all want? We all want young, clean, and clear skin. And literally, there are billions of dollars spent trying to get us to have that young, youthful skin. And the truth is, is that we can actually have that without buying products that have chemicals and compounds in it that aren't so good for our body. Your skin is a porous organ. What goes into it goes straight into the bloodstream. So you don't want, want to be putting chemicals on your skin even if it makes you look younger. And the great news is, is that there are totally natural things that you can do to make you look younger. And the bad news is, is there's probably foods that you're eating right now unwittingly that are actually prematurely aging you, causing wrinkles, causing those kind of the jowls and the sagging in the skin, not just in the face, but on all parts of the body. And those are processed foods and sugar, all those kinds of things. Here are the culprits. I talk about them a lot, particularly refined sugar, but even the natural sugars, if we have them out of balance of nature, if we're eating these things way out of what we would if we were actually sourcing them ourselves in nature, it becomes a problem. So even the chocolates, you know, we have lovely organic chocolates. If you're eating too much of those out of context of nature, it's gonna be a problem with your skin. So what you wanna to move to, as always, we're moving to nature. We're gonna get that lovely kind of glow that you get from living foods in particular. Now here's the thing about living foods is that they have electromagnetic energy in them. They are alive. And even if you don't have great skin to begin with, like me, I ate sugar for the first 35 years of my life, like it was the only food group and it created some, some problems and issues with my skin. So sugar is the biggest contributor to skin losing elasticity. It creates inflammation which produces enzymes that break down collagen and elasta, and that results in that sagging skin and wrinkles because digested sugar permanently attaches to collagen in your skin through a process known as glycation. The other thing that will age your skin is something known as AGEs, which is an acronym for Advanced Glycated End Products. It's amazing that that acronym actually spells age. And Advanced Glycated End Products are the process of browning your food. So believe it or not, all those things that we brown, like breads and anything that forms a brown crust or that we cook on the barbecue, those are things that will age us. So the antidote to all of this is obviously to go back to more natural foods, you know, your salads, soups, you know, eating vegetables as they are, you know, even with dips or however it is that will make you actually eat them and invite you to eat them. But things also like yoga, and you can actually be doing face yoga, like, like actually doing exercises. And I find that hot yoga in particular, most of the yogis that I know, they have great skin. There's lots of things that you can actually be doing. Mindfulness, de-stressing yourself, 
obviously will also show in your face too. It will actually start to calm you. So all the things that calm you that we talk about in these segments will definitely help. And if you want more tools, tips, and strategies to powerfully nourish, energize, and protect your body, simply go to returntofood.com. Back on set with Marilyn Wilson, author of Life Outside the Box, 10 selected interviews from hundreds that she's conducted over a career that didn't start until she was 49 years old, a career that revealed and developed in the public eye. Yeah. A lot of things to be intimidated, a lot of vulnerability <laughs> there. Was it a scary time? Is it a scary time? Absolutely. You know, when I jumped in with full feet, I had no idea. Like, I just, my heart leaps, my head follows way behind. So here I am. Uh, the opportunity was to write on f in the fashion world, and I'm shopping at Zellers and Value Village and, and Costco, and I'm going to fashion weeks locally mm -hmm. as media. And and my clothes, my clothes, my shoes, everything was out. So yeah, it was How very did you fearful. Do that? I mean, sometimes I I, I, th I can relate to the feeling, and I feel like everybody can know what is in my own head, and I have to tell myself, that's just the inside. You know, but for, I don't know what yeah. they see on the outside. For a long time, I was learning, and I'm learning in the public eye. And there was there was a lot of mistakes and hard times. It's not fun to learn in the in, in the public eye, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there were times I did great and times I didn't. And finally, I was having coffee with somebody and said, I used to feel you when you walked in the room. Used and I to. don't anymore. And I said, why? She says, you've lost your confidence. And I don't think I had confidence before. I think I was so excited and passionate about having this opportunity. I think it carried me. And, and over time, that, you, you know, that wears, that you got used to it. So I thought about it for a long time. And I realized it's really important to, at times to know in your head who you are and, and why you're going and that is a choice so if I'm going someplace like I had to go to Leone's last night which is a very high-end store it was a very high-end clientele as media I saw pictures on Facebook yeah look, you look fabulous well I start by dressing the part because that helps and I had help learning how to do that but but also in my head I have to remind myself I am going as Marilyn R. Wilson who's been published and worked in rain who's run her own magazine I do have the credentials and I think sometimes we as women downplay ourselves. Oh yeah, I learned. I'm self-taught. We, we have all these negative messages. I'm kind of faking it. I'm, I'm kind, kind of, of faking yeah. it. And the truth of the matter is I've done 150 interviews. I've interviewed Raphael Mazzucco, who, who does Sports Illustrated. I have published my own magazine. I have worked with Rain in New York. I have done this. I have earned the right to walk in and carry that on my shoulders instead of walking in going, I wonder if I'll make a mistake tonight if somebody will look, you know? We, the message we give ourselves before we go, and part of dressing the part means you also click in. I'm not mum today. I'm Marilyn being interviewed on TV. Mm -hmm. And so I came with two outfits, which is, which is going to feel right when I get here. Mm -hmm. I really work to put myself mentally in the right place because I've earned that. And I, you have to remind yourself, you know, self-confidence is a constant for me. Constant. It's something I constantly have to work on and remind myself. Do you think some I've women earned it. Are, are sort of scared to celebrate their own success and acknowledge their own success that way because it could cross into bragging, or or too much ego, Absolutely. and that's been squashed in us, well, in many of us. And I was brought up very religious. Sex, mm. Success was a dirty word for a woman. Period. Mm -hmm. You weren't supposed to be successful. You were supposed to live a life of service. You'd that never have home. money. And somehow there was something very spiritual about that. You got to let go of that. We as women are told to stay in the background and nurture and not be pushy. You don't have to be pushy to accept your, your hard work. Mm -hmm. To accept. So I don't go and go, I'm Marilyn Wilson. But I also don't go in, oh, does anybody want to talk to me? You know, it's, there's a difference between having ego and just feeling confident in your own skin. And I guess that's what I try to do. I try to make sure in that I am coming yeah. because of what I've done here. I'm coming because I'm doing an event write up. They want me here. So I don't have to make waves. I don't have to have a lot of pictures taken. I just walk in and do my job. That's what I'm there for. I'm there to do a job. And so you have to put, when you're there to do a job, you put yourself aside. I didn't know if we'd have time to get to it. Okay. We have a couple of short minutes left. Oh my goodness. Success. <laughs> 
Success. How yes. do you define success in, in what you do? I love this question because I asked it 150 times and the first time somebody asked it, I realized I'd never even thought about it. I was brought up, it was a dirty word. Right. And I spent the next several weeks thinking about it. And I think the fact that I have taken the, had the courage to follow a difficult path, to jump in without training, to learn in the, in the public eye, and actually to publish a book. I'm very humble. I wouldn't have done it without my support system, but I'm the one who didn't delete the book. I'm in, very glad in that fear. So, so I think for me, the fact that stumbling and procrastinating, I'm still getting there. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm following my passion and getting there, I've got to quit beating myself up about the little side slips or the little, it's, it's just, you got to live in the moment, each moment, each day, one step in front of the other. Thank you for sharing this moment. Here with us. I'm so glad this you came. This was wonderful. I'm it so was. glad. I hope we're going to. We have, have the turtle. Sometime. We are. We, we have. We have one more thing with the turtle, though. We're going to ask you. This is what we call a power bite, <laughs> and it's a little thought to leave our conversation today. And we're going to ask you to choose and one and read it to us. Oh dear. <laughs> Do I have to comment on it or just? No. Like, we're oh, just okay, going to leave it and, and 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 process and linger with it. This is a really good one. We figured it would be. It is a powerful and purposeful life includes play and fun. We had a lot of fun today. And we say amen to that. It gave me goosebumps. That means it's important. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We are all different and imperfect. But there's beauty in imperfection. There's power in imperfection. Imperfections are a gift, and we should hold tightly, cherish our gifts. It's what makes us unique. We women strive our whole lives to try to fit in, conform, or be like others. We buy into the lie that if we do this, we just might be accepted, or maybe even loved. But sadly, we lose ourselves, we lose our self-confidence, and we lose our passion when we do this. Passion can find you at any age, so embrace your uniqueness. Be excited, be unique, and seek opportunities that help you build your confidence. Self-confidence is something to constantly work on. You put the work in mentally, and it puts you in the right place. So visualize your power and face all your fears. Note to self, live your passion outside the box.